Hello class. So on this video, we're going to start on section 4.9. Now 4.9 is a sort of introduction to integral calculus. Uh, we'll get more in depth into how to define integration in chapter 5, but in chapter 4, or here in section 4.9, there are still a few things we can say just with the tools that we have so far. Okay. Now, what we're going to start doing is, and what I want you to think about is integration as being the opposite of differentiation. Okay. So basically, you can have you have a function, you can take its derivative. Okay. So what's going to be integration? Well, it's going to be a way of going back to the original function from its derivative. Okay. And in order to start with that sort of mechanism, we're going to start with this definition. Right. So definition one of an antiderivative. Okay. So a function, capital F, and let me make a comment here that usually for antiderivatives, we use capital capital letters. So I'm going to try to stay stick to that notation whenever I can. Just, just keep that in mind. Okay, so a function, capital F, is an antiderivative of little f on an interval i, provided that the derivative of capital F equals f for all x on i. So you can kind of see that in a way we're going backwards, right? Because usually what would we do? We would start with little f and find its derivative. What are we saying now? Well, we're starting with f and we're looking for a function whose derivative equals f, right? So, so kind of like going like this. So I have f of x. We can take the derivative. So here, let me write derivative. And we get f prime of x. Or we could go the other way by taking an antiderivative, and we get to big F. And what is our relationship between big F and little f? Well, the derivative of big F equals small f. All right, so that's sort of what's going on. You can either take the derivative of f to get f prime, or find a function whose derivative equals f. Okay. Now, let's do a quick example. So let f of x be just the function one on the interval negative infinity to infinity. What is an antiderivative f for f or of f, of little f? So what's an antiderivative big f of little f? Now, does a function have more than one antiderivative? And then we will ask the same questions for f of x equals x cubed, okay? So we're looking for an antiderivative of f of x equals one, right? So we're looking for a function such that the derivative of this function equals f of x, right, which equals one. So that, that's what an antiderivative is, right? A function whose derivative equals little f. Okay, so what function has derivative equal to one? Well, we've seen this a couple of times. We know that if we let f of x, big f of x, be equal to x, then we know that its derivative is just one. Right. So, f of x equals x is an antiderivative of little f equals 1. And of course, this works on the whole interval negative infinity to infinity. Okay. So, you see that in practice, this is pretty, at least for examples like this, pretty straightforward. Just find a function whose derivative equals little f. Now the next part, does a function have more than one antiderivative? Okay. So think about it for a moment. Does a function have more than one antiderivative? So for example, in this case, we know that big F, big F equals X is an antiderivative of little f equals one. Is there another function who's an antiderivative of little f equals one? Well, I think there is, and I can give you one here real quick. I can give you Let's call it big F2. What if we let this one be x plus 3? Well, what's its derivative? Right, the derivative of x is 1. The derivative of, of 3 is 0, so we get 1. Okay. So this is also an antiderivative of little f. And in general, if we have, if we let f sub c of x be just x plus any constant, well, 
what do we get? Well, what's the derivative of this function, big F sub C of X? Well, its derivative is, well, derivative of X is one, derivative, derivative of a constant is zero. So we see that any function like this, that looks like X plus a constant, it's an antiderivative of f equals 1. So I already gave you an infinite amount of antiderivatives for just the function f equals 1. So there's definitely more than one antiderivative for any function because you can always just add a constant. And when you take that constant and take the derivative, it always equals to 0. So that's why this works. Now that's going to be important. So that's, some, that's an important thing to know. But if you, if you have any antiderivative, if you add a constant, well, that function is still an antiderivative of the original function. Okay. Now let's see what happens with f of x equals x cubed. We want to find an antiderivative. So we want to find the function whose derivative equals x cubed. Okay, so think about it for a moment. So we want a function whose derivative equals x cubed. Okay, so how do we go about something like this? Well, if we want x cubed, first of all, remember that we talked about this a long time ago, right? That when you have a polynomial of degree four, you take its derivative, you get a polynomial of degree three. So what we can try to do here is try to find work with a polynomial of degree four. So maybe something that looks like so let me use another color. Maybe something that looks like f of x equals you know, a constant times x to the fourth. We're kind of, and we want to find what that constant is. Okay. So as we have it, if we take the derivative, we get 4c times x cubed. Okay. So we get this extra constant here. Because we want our derivative to be x cubed. Here we get 4 times c times x cubed. So what can we do? Well, we have here a leverage because we can decide c to be whatever we want. right? That's why I wrote it as c as just being any constant. So I think it looks like if we start with c equals 1 over 4, right? then when we take the derivative, we're going to get 4 times 1 over 4 times x, times x cubed. The 4 and the 1 over 4 are going to cancel, and we're going to get x cubed. So I think this works. So we can let f of x be equal to 1 fourth x to the fourth. And we can check that this is an antiderivative, right? Because if we take its derivative, well, as we saw, we get 4 times 1 fourth is x cubed, which equals x cubed. And that's what we wanted, right? Remember, an antiderivative is a function whose derivative equals little f. And now we found one. And again, as I said before, any function that looks like this is also an antiderivative. Right? Because when you take the derivative of this, right, what do we get? Well, as we saw, this part becomes x cubed. And the derivative of c, well, c is a constant, so we get 0. So again, when, once you find one antiderivative, you can find infinitely many by just adding constants. So that's a small introduction to how antiderivatives work. Again, an antiderivative of a function, little f, is a function big f whose derivative equals little f. So again, we're going backwards. Right? So instead of taking derivatives, we're going backwards. And the other thing to note is once you find one derivative, you can find infinite, one antiderivative, sorry, you can find infinitely many by just adding a constant, right? Because whenever you take the derivative of a constant, that just goes to zero.